All right, colleagues, are we ready for Mr. Hickman? Yes, thumbs up. Yes. yes. Bad. We had mute on accidentally. <laughs> it's okay. All right, Jessalyn, are you hanging out for Michelle this time? I'm done. Just thank you for your time. Nice. All right, you're spending all day with us today. Okay, so on Mr. Hickman, was there anything new that she might have left for you that we need to know? Um, yes. So right after he was granted an interview, um, Mr. Hickman was segregated for passing K-2. Um, he went through the appeal process. He was found guilty. Um, he appealed the report to uh, our administration and they dropped it, reduced it to a minor. So going ahead as planned with the work release with him, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention if you guys hadn't seen it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Colleagues, did you have any questions? I do. Why was it reduced? Excuse me? Why was that reduced? What was the finding? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can barely hear you. I'm trying to turn up the volume. No, no worries. Why was that reduced? Uh, so I briefly read through the, uh, the appeal that he put in, um, bas the basic of the appeal on the major report. Didn't find any new evidence, but was reduced by the deputy warden. It's, it's just reduced to a minor. There was no other description in it other than that. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. You bet. All right. Um, if there's no further questions, well, you can go ahead and bring Mr. Hickman in. All right. Uh, seat there. They're a little bit hard to hear, so. Hello, Mr. Hickman. Can you give us your full name and number, please? Corey Lee Hickman, 646-9628. Thank you, sir. And have you been in front of the Board of Parole before? No. All right. Let me help explain how it's going to go. So what you have today in front of you is your three member panel of the Board of Parole. My name is Renee Schulte and I'm on one screen, mostly because I'm coughing and I have a stuffy nose. So if I have to hit the mute button, I'm sorry, that's what's happening. Okay. On the other screen, you see our two guys today, it's Jesse Rincon and James Moses. So we're gonna be your three member panel of your board, okay? Okay. And before we get going any further, we wanna just remind you, this is a public forum in that on the Zoom, the public and the media can be listening but they're not going to participate, okay? Yeah. And in the conclusion of this meeting, you might talk about some confidential things, things like your mental health history, your medical history, your treatment history. Are you okay with that for your interview? Yeah. And you wanna keep going? Yeah. Okay, great. So how this is gonna work, the three of us are gonna ask you some questions and then we're just gonna ask you to do your best and tell us the truth. And then after we're done, it'll be your turn and you can tell us anything you want us to know, anything we forgot to ask, anything you've been thinking about you want us to hear. And then we make a decision. You'll be able to see us and hear us talk about it. And I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do by the end of the interview. Okay. 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 So to get us started today, can you talk to me about the crime that was committed that brought you to prison today? Um, it was, uh, so I was previously on probation for, um, a domestic. And then I had caught a new charge, which I was uh, hanging out with my neighbor at the time. And I was under the influence and I was intoxicated. And I thought he was trying to like set me up. And I um, I took his, his firearm and I'm like, man, I feel like you're on some weird stuff. And I didn't have permission, you know what I'm saying? So I took it and then I left the apartment. And then later on, I came back because I live right next door and uh, the police was there and they tried to stop me. They, well, they asked me like who I was and I told them a different name. And then he told me to stop, but I had took off. And later on, the the... The route I had ran, 
I had threw the gun and they found the gun, which was the neighbors. And um, so I had got like uh, put, uh, uh, interference with official acts with a firearm, dominion, trafficking, and like person uneligible to carry, but it all had got dropped to uh, dominion and control of a firearm and um, interference with official acts with a firearm. And that's what brought me to prison. And then I had the probation, they had put the probation with that and I ended up getting an eight years sentence. Okay, thank you so much. That was very helpful. Um, so you've gotten into quite a bit of trouble since you've been in prison. Can you talk to me about what's going on with that? Yeah, well, see, once I got to Mount Pleasant, I was just, I, I wasn't taking, I, I was just like, man, forget whatever happens. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was just, I wasn't thinking the way I should have been thinking as far as like, I was, my mindset was I'll be home one day. You know what I'm saying? They can't hold me forever. So I was really doing whatever I wanted. I didn't want it. You couldn't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was a lot of, it was a lot of things that just added up and added up like, like uh, OPAs. And then uh, I had said, I, I had asked the CEO a crazy question. I, I just, just being just just not thinking about what I really should have been thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So then once I got to um, Anamosa, it's just like, man, it just start to wear on me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got to I gotta do something different. You know what I'm saying? My, I'm thinking it's going to just be, uh, uh, I'll be out in like a year. And, and, and then I start to realize like, Time's going, you know what I'm saying. So once I got to Anamosa, I had a, I had a better, a better mindset than I did since I've been here. I caught two reports in, in Mount Pleasant. I had like twelve, you know what I'm saying. So in Mount Pleasant, I was just like, whatever happens, happens. I can't, I, I y'all can't hold me forever. But then once I got here, I, I, I learned like, man, I got stuff going on out there. I need to be out there. All right. So you, you made a change in your mindset. Um, can you talk to me about victims in this case? Who are your victims? Do you know how many of them there are? Uh, well, I know the domestic is, uh, y'all will consider that still my case, right? Because I was on probation for it. Yes, sir. Okay, it's still so, charge. So, That's right. Yep. So I got a, a, a Alexis Davis was the one I had caught the domestic on. And then Jonathan, uh, I don't know his last name, but that was my neighbor, the one that I had uh, got the gun from. And yeah, those are the only two victims I, I have as far as like the cases. Okay. Do you have any relationship with either of them today? No. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's all my questions for right now. I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. So, Jesse, would you have additional questions? Yeah, I do. Um, they show you validate. Hi, I'm Jesse. First off, nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, they have you validated as a vice lord. How active are you now? No. I... Do you have a five point star or four point star tattoos anywhere? No. Uh -uh. You do not? No. Nowhere. I got five tattoos. I got my mom's name on my hand, uh, my dad's name on my right. I got a puzzle piece right here. No, you know what? That's my fault. I, I scrolled down too far. And okay. I apologize to you. That's my fault. Okay. Okay. Get back here. So in your relationship, you had some domestic charges. What do you think went wrong that that the talking didn't work and they had to go to violence on those domestic charges? Uh, alcohol. Alcohol? Yeah, just not, not. See, the first domestic, I didn't do, uh, I, I, I had broke her phone and they charged that it was a simple assault. And then the second one, I busted out her windows and, and, uh, 
when she had got in, she even she even said it like the cut, no, the trash can cut her, and they charged that with a a domestic also. But it was alcohol, me not, you know what I'm saying, not controlling my 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 feelings the way I should have. Okay. So how much would you say would you would you consider yourself an alcoholic? Uh not necessarily. And the only reason I see around all this time, and I'm, this ain't an excuse, but I was just really like messed up. My mom had passed. And and see, my mom was like the glue of the family. I don't really know my aunts and uncles and stuff. So my mom was the one to keep things together. You know what I'm saying? So it it, it, it is an excuse because I'm still a grown man at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I just, I wasn't handling it the way the, I wasn't grieving the way I, 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 I was supposed to, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I am sorry about the loss of your mom. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, what do you want to accomplish you haven't accomplished yet? Man, I want to, I want to, I want to be able to pay my, my 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 dad and my brother's bills the rent because that's who I got left right now and my dad had a stroke and um he's he's slowly recovering from it he he had a stroke in 2012 but he he still lived with us like he's still learning how to talk and stuff and my brother he got shot like five times and he was supposed to be paralyzed but he's slowly coming back from it too so i want to i gotta be there for them like like they can't even walk across the street properly without you know what i'm saying so i i want to be able to if they need anything be there that's like my main focus you know what i'm saying and and and, and do the things that they need help doing that makes sense but you understand that for you to be there, you got to make good decisions on your part first. You got to start with you. That way, anything good that filters out of you is going to be good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, last thing I just want to mention is that I uh, said that in your evaluation that was submitted to us for our information to do this interview, um, that you were going to make tip four pretty soon. That's yeah. a heck of a, that's a great accomplishment compared to where you were a year ago. So yeah. I just want to commend you on that for working hard and trying to establish that reputation. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have no more questions. Go ahead and answer. No, yes. I, I'm tip four now too. Congratulations. Thank you. Good, good job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse. James, did you have questions? Uh, no, I'm a pass. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Hickman, now is the time for you to tell us anything that you want us to know that maybe you didn't get to say or something we forgot to ask you. The floor is yours. Man, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know that's bold, but what I mean by that is, like I said from the um, from the beginning, I came in here with the as far as uh, prison. I came in prison like, man, they can't hold me forever. I got a little number. You know what I'm saying? And I was just, I was, I was selfish. You know what I'm saying? I was, that's what it was. I was self-centered. I wasn't thinking about who I was putting in, 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 in harm's way as far as like my brothers. You know what I'm saying? If something now, something was to happen to them or my dad, I'm supposed to be the ones there. And I feel like as time went by, I just learned like the ripple effect, you know what I'm saying? Okay, by me being away, it's it's easy for me to be here. I I mean, this place will do whatever for you, you know what I'm saying? The hard part out there, you taking care of business when 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 you're out there and you got to do it all on your own. And 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 I I, I didn't realize that until like 2 years in and and and, and my brothers like, "Man, I need you." I'm in here. They're doing everything for me in here. So, so when he told me that, it's like, like man, and 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 that's that's all I got. My brother and my dad. So when he's telling me that, 
I just start thinking about the people I was affecting and it, 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 and, and not just myself and, and, and patience. I've been working on patience. I, I always react you, like, like impulsive, you know what I'm saying? So I always try to figure out like, what what else is gonna have the domino effect? Or oh, I could just I could easily go and do this, but then the people that's gonna have to pay for it, it ain't just me. And um I feel like I I I, I got a lot of patience from that. And 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 um the, the 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 support system that I have as far as like the people, the my a couple of my homegirls, the they're, they're great support systems. You know what I'm saying? They 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 don't want me to be doing the things I did. Uh, another thing is, like, I never had the feeling of, like, man, I can't wait to get a job. Never, ever in my life. And, and like, I feel like that now. Like, like, like man, I, I want to get a job. You know what I'm saying? I, but just, like, little stuff like that. I could see the change within myself. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, uh, I just, I know it's all easier said than done, but I know I got a, I got a strong mind. I'm, I, I, I never been the type to follow. So I know when I want something, I can get it. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I, and I, and I, I truly believe I want this for the better, for my brother, for my dad. This is my first time ever being down. So I ain't never witnessed none of this. You know what I'm saying? And, but I, 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 I could tell you what, I don't, I don't want to come back. But, um, and I just, I just, yeah, I, I learned about like, man, it, just the bigger picture. That's, that's the main thing. Like it, it ain't, I'm just not the, I'm not the only one getting hurt in this situation. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's more people. I lost my best friend and, uh, it's just like, man, life is still going on. And, 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 and I'm in here messing around, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking, Oh, I can't, I won't be, I won't be gone forever. But that I was just childish. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I matured a lot. I, 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 I know, Every action got consequences, and, and 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 at first I wasn't. I knew that, but I didn't care about that. Now I actually care about other people for the most part. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna. Uh, one one situation can affect everybody, and I wasn't looking at it like that at all. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. So for you to sit back, just take a deep breath and hang out. We're going to chat amongst ourselves and I'll be right back with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Colleagues, what would you guys like to do today? Uh, yes, I, I can go ahead and go. Um, I, I thought um, um, Mr. Hickman was definitely uh, trying to be as transparent with us as he could. Uh, he realizes some of the mistakes that he has made early on. Uh, he talked about um, when he went to um, Mount Pleasant initially, he had the I don't give a care attitude uh, and just was, you know, flying by the wayside or the seat of his pants doing whatever he felt that he wanted to do. But once he got a chance to transition to Anamosa, he seemed to have stated he's grown up a bit. He recognized that he's missing out on time, uh, but we're recognizing missing out on time, his brother, his family, and the people that mean the most to him. And uh, <clears throat> he's, he's doing things to keep himself locked up. So wanting to stay away uh, from those type of uh, tendencies and think that this opportunity, if released, um, will be good for him because he knows better. Uh, therefore, I'm in agreement with the DOC's recommendation um, to a work release. Um, so I guess we're looking at a, uh, a WRG C11P. I also would look at uh, the 20B um, um, for no early discharge the 
40A with substance abuse, and if you all think of any more, uh, along with the 50A as well. And then if there's any other codes that I did leave out, uh, I'm open to uh, hear what you all's thoughts are for uh, Mr. Hickman. Thank you, James. Jesse? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think you had a really good interview. Uh, he didn't minimize anything from the gun to the incident to what he was doing before and chasing baby. I think the main thing he's re realized was the cost benefit, and that's that's huge for me. Um, understanding that how you affect others, and he even said himself the ripple effect, the domino effect is what he said. So I'm in agreement with the DOC recommendation. Uh, same codes that James had said, um, although I would add mental health. He, I don't believe he takes any medication. No, I don't. Okay. So I'm in agreement also, so we'll deliver our decision and I'll explain it as we go. So Mr. Hickman, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna release you to work release. Uh, we're gonna add a couple of treatment codes just to make sure you get the support that you need on the way out. So we're gonna ask you to continue on your path of substance use, and we're gonna ask you to check in with mental health and see if they can be a support to you. If you go and they decide you don't need anything, you don't have to keep going, so it's no big deal. But they're just out there as a support in case you need something. And then finally, we're going to give you a 50A. That's an alcohol prohibition. You don't need to be drinking it, and you should not be hanging out in places where it's primarily sold. So like liquor stores and bars, you can go to restaurants where it's served. Okay? okay. That concludes our interview. Go out and do well, okay? Thank you. Thank Wish you well. Thank you. Yep. Good luck.